If you're looking for the best camera on the phone, you've probably heard various recommendations from different people. But after testing nearly a dozen of the best camera phones myself over the last year, I can tell you one thing straight away. There is no single one best camera phone. Anticlimactic? Yes. but. Let me explain. There is no one best overall camera phone, but there are phones that are much better than others in specific areas. So rather than try to come up with just one phone and give it that gold medal, let me tell you where each camera phone really stands out. And if that's what you use, just go for that phone, or at least give it a try. First on this list is a phone many currently rank as the best camera. Its design is inspired by the look of a vintage camera and it has a nice leather-like finish and it also has a giant camera system. This is the Xiaomi 13 Ultra and its big advantage is the 1-inch sensor, much larger than one on an iPhone or a Galaxy. And in the world of cameras, remember, it's not about the megapixels, it's about the sensor size. Now this phone also has two zoom cameras, a 3x zoom one and a 5x zoom one. And in my roughly 10 days of actively using the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, I noticed that it does one thing better than all others. It gets rid of the typical smartphone look in photos and this usually refers to the incredibly sharp and doctored HDR style that we are used to seeing from phones. Images from the Xiaomi have a nice soft detail and very cinematic colors. Most of the time, you don't even need to edit the pictures. You get great looking JPEGs right out the gate. So just compare these shots from the Xiaomi and how nice and natural they look compared to the iPhone and the Galaxy with their smartphone look. Now, the second great thing about the Xiaomi is the zoom cameras. Now, they have much faster aperture than other phones, which makes these cameras far more useful in low light. Most phones really struggle with zooming at night, but not the Xiaomi. All right, next on the list is my personal favorite, and I have had this phone in my pocket as my second device in the past couple of months. That phone is the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. Just look at this stunning red color, and it's not quite as gigantic as the Xiaomi 2. So the Vivo also has a large 1-inch main camera sensor and it also has two zoom lenses, so the hardware is just like the Xiaomi. Now, I found that the Vivo does a particularly good job with nighttime shots and you also get much less of that artificial oversharpening in images. However, the number one reason for me to pack the Vivo in my bag is the portrait mode. If you like taking pictures of people, this is the phone to get. Vivo gives you these incredibly cool portrait mode styles that look like a rare vintage lens. That swirly bokeh biotar style looks absolutely amazing. And you also have a bunch of others that look incredible. Vivo even has its own Vivo portrait film vintage filter that I can't stop using. I have now gone on a few trips and I have been using this portrait mode style for all of my photos, even non-portraits. It just looks so good. And some may say that you can edit images on any phone with an app and get a similar look. And that is also kind of true, but how many people would be willing to edit dozens of photos every single time. There is something special about not having to edit a photo and just getting great results straight away. Now, after using this Vivo phone, I honestly wonder why other companies only have these kind of lame filters, but nothing even comes close to the styles you get with the Vivo. All right, third on the list is the new Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Sony simply because it seems that the company just has the complete opposite approach of others, like Vivo. Now, if you just want to never worry about camera settings and just press a button and have a good picture, do not get a Sony phone. This latest Xperia is so complex, it has three different camera apps. It's a bit of a mess, honestly. So why is the Xperia on this list? Well, if you really want to tinker with manual settings, then it really shines. You have manual control over everything, and this phone can also act as a viewfinder for your Sony Alpha camera. And you can use it to live stream with your fancy professional camera. That is really cool. Now, my personal favorite feature and the reason to occasionally use the Xperia is 4K 120 slow motion. I have no idea why other phones have not implemented this, but this is easily the best looking slow motion you will ever see on a phone. Heck, many high-end cameras lack this feature. And you can create some truly impressive cinematic videos with 4K 120. All right, next up we have a phone we all know, the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, I can argue that the iPhone 14 Pro introduces so much sharpening to its photos that it is actually a step back from previous iPhones.
iPhones in terms of pure quality. You don't notice this on a smaller screen, but open the photo on a tablet or a laptop or a bigger screen, and yeah, it can look really bad, creating this weird halo effect with contrasting objects and just overall. So why is this iPhone still on this list? Now first, it has an incredibly simple camera that gives you good consistency. And second, it is very versatile, especially now that it has a 2x sensor crop, which you can also use for portrait mode, unlike on many other phones. And you can also make those sharpening issues disappear if you shoot with the 48 megapixel Pro RAW mode. But the number one reason why you should get the iPhone remains the video quality. The iPhone consistently captures clean video with no noise, realistic colors, and a great dynamic range in various conditions. It also has very good stabilization, even if the Galaxy S23 series lately is giving it a run for its money in that regard. The iPhone still has the best high resolution panorama capture by far and has the best cinematic mode video that I know many people also love using. All right, we've already mentioned the Galaxy. So next on the list is unsurprisingly the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. The obvious reason to get this phone is it's one of a kind 10 times periscope zoom lens. No other phone in 2023 has this kind of long range zoom. Samsung has perfected the quality, but most importantly, the stabilization, and you have incredibly stable zoomed shots. I really love the quality and the freedom this one lens gives you. I have shot all sorts of stunning videos with this camera that I can never capture on any other phone. And Samsung has also shown commitment and it has pushed updates that improve the image quality and early problems with slower shutter speeds are getting fixed. And another area where Samsung really stands out is the selfies. Selfies from the Galaxy S23 series consistently look better than pretty much any other phone on the market. Selfies have pleasing colors, nice skin tones, they look good. However, the phone is not quite perfect, and the one thing I wish Samsung improved was the colors. Sometimes these incredibly vibrant colors in photos are just too much, and I would love to have a way to capture more natural looking colors. All right, speaking of colors, next on the list is the Oppo Find X6 Pro. This Oppo phone is a great all around camera, but the one thing that impressed me the most is its color accuracy when capturing different skin tones. So if you like taking pictures of people, and this phone is really good at that. And let's also take a moment to appreciate its design. The dual tone look is incredibly cool. All right, next up we have a phone you can actually buy easily and that is the Google Pixel 7 series and the Google Pixel 7 Pro here. Google is the company that started the whole computational photography thing and the Pixel 7 series still has a very distinct HDR look that most people actually like. It also helps that it's not as saturated and extreme as your typical iPhone or Galaxy shots. I'm also very impressed by the zoom on the Pixel. While the Galaxy can do 10x zoom, the Pixel does better in the range from 5x all the way until 9.9 times zoom. So if you just want a simple camera on a more affordable phone, the Pixel is definitely a great choice. Last but not least, let me mention a phone that does one thing insanely well. That one thing is macro photography, and the phone is the Xiaomi 13 Pro. This is the only phone we know of which has a zoom camera that can do macro. Now, this is important. The 3x zoom camera on the Xiaomi can focus as close as just 4 inches. Most other phones do macro, but they typically use the ultra-wide camera, which also means you get that ultra-wide look which honestly is usually not something a professional photographer would ever use. Most macro photographers actually use some sort of a zoom lens. It just makes sense. So if you want to get a truly professional macro looking photos on your phone, the Xiaomi 13 Pro is the only phone that does that. And I wish many others would do the same in the future too. So there are other phones that also have a good camera system. I haven't talked about the OnePlus 11, phones like the Honor Magic 5 Pro, the Huawei P60 Pro, and I'm sure you will point out more in the comments. But I do think it's these phones here where you will find the best camera features. So what's your favorite and why? Hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys around.